in my mouth. Cause she bad you talking all day when she can't hear nothing. If she can't hear then how she no talk coming out of my mouth. I think she trying to talk. Now she going crazy eating herself. Stop that. Helen, stop it. <laughs> Helen, Helen, stop it. Oh! Help! 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 Helen, stop it. Stop it. Okay, okay, give mother the scissors. Helen. Helen, give mother the scissors. Helen. Okay. Okay. There now. Okay. My pretty girl, huh? Well, Father. I hope you got the story ready. What story is that? One you're going to tell when the little savage kills somebody. Your Honor, I had no idea that poor deaf and dumb child could be so violent. Your sister is none of your concern, James. Uh, don't you have some occasion you need to dress for? Why don't I ever meet any of your young friends, James? How can I invite people here? But surely your friends don't think that Helen is any reflection on you. Well, Helen is the real head of this house. She's probably just pretending she can't speak off here, so she don't have to answer to anyone. Your jealousy of that helpless child is intolerable. Auntie. Oh, well, here we are. Here's our father. And Aunt Helen. <laughs> I saw James. I hope soon you went boiling again. No, no. Oh, Katie, we all love Helen. But surely you must see what an effect she is having on your household. Mm. Mm. Why, James and Arthur can barely speak a civil word. And all your time is given over to the girl. You hardly ever have time for your new baby. James is right. You and Arthur must do something oh. and soon. What can we do, Evelyn? The only thing left to do is to take Helen to an asylum. And Kate would never stand for it. Well, have you tried? We have taken her to every hospital in two states. No one holds out any hope. What about that Dr. Chisholm up in Baltimore? I read an article in your very own newspaper, Arthur. They say he has cured many cases of blindness that other doctors have given up on. Now, why not write to him? And have Kate's heart broken again? I'm prepared for my heart to break any number of times, Captain. I'll write to him myself if you like, Katie. There isn't going to be any cure. And the sooner we accept that fact, the better off we'll all be. I will never accept it, Captain. I can't. I'm going to the princess. Mm -hmm. 
And now look, Helen? I can't turn my back for a moment. Arthur, Helen knows a lot more than you think about you think. What goes on in this house? Nothing to solve by running all over the country every time some quack doctor gets his nail in the pit. Nothing is solved by running to the office either. Hmm. Kid, darling, what can anyone do? The kindest thing we could do would be to find a sanitarium in a beautiful spot where she no. would be taken care of. No, never. Oh, she tore off my buttons. She wants the doll. She wants the doll to have eyes. I'm sorry, Evelyn. Just tell me what it'll cost to have the buttons replaced tonight. I know she does. Oh, don't mind about that. What are a couple of buttons if it makes Helen happy? I'll sew them on if you like. Is that what you're trying to do? Make Helen happy? Nothing makes her happy. Everything you give her only makes her work. <laughs> she can have these little things that make her happy. Oh, Helen, stop helping me. Helen, you cannot do things like that, okay? Why? She can have the little things that make her happy. If you won't send her away, okay. then we must find some way of confining her. Oh, you want to lock her away in the attic like some sort of mad woman? Mm. Oh. <laughs> 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 All right. I'll write to Dr. Chisholm. I know. Dr. Chisholm could do nothing for the girl and refer them to Dr. Alexander Graham Bell. As the girl is young and the parents are not willing to send her to us, I have put you up for the role of governess. Governess? Or nursemaid? We both knew you'd get rid of me one of these days. You've accomplished so much here. Why, when you first came to us, you couldn't even spell your name. Are your eyes still so painful? No, it's my ear, sir. Tell me about the child. Is she bright? Or dull? Could she be taught? She's given to tantrums, they say. So am I. Maybe you should warn the killers about me. I told them nothing of your history except your qualifications for the job. Here is the money for your train ticket. And here is a gift from all of us with our love. We're going to miss you. This is my last chance to counsel you, Annie. You lack tact and the talent to bend to others. You're hard to fool and harder to please. But all the same, we are proud of you. We'll walk to meet the train again. Well, I hope the girl is on this one. Oh, she will be. Oh, uh, well, we'll see you at supper then. Your mother's not here, child. I'm here, though. I'm your father. I'm your father. I used to swing you through the air. You weren't even two years of age yet. I wonder if you remember any of that. Or oh, any of us. Here you are. There's a piece of candy for you. Mama, don't you miss it? 
Captain Keller wouldn't like this if he saw it, but what's one little candy going to hurt? Yes, sir. Ma'am. Miss Sullivan? Yes. I'm James Keller. I have a brother, Jimmy. Are you Helen? Half brother. Do you have a chunk? Yes. Henry, perfect. Come on, Miss Sullivan. Miss Sullivan. I'm so relieved. We were beginning to get a little bit worried about you. The man who told me that ticket ought to be tied to the track. I'm uh, Catherine Keller. I'm Helen's mother. You didn't bring Helen. I was hoping you would. Well, her father wanted to spend the afternoon with her, actually. They so enjoy their time together. Hey, you should be ashamed. Miss Sullivan, you'll find it in the South and make up these little stories just to amuse each other. I hope you won't mind. How much can a blind and deaf child learn, Miss Sullivan? I don't know. Does she communicate with you at all? Oh, well, I always know what she wants, if that's what you mean. No, you don't. All anybody knows is that if you give Helen a piece of candy, she'll be quiet for a while. Can you teach her to sit still, Miss Sullivan? I'd have to teach her language first. Language? If she doesn't know words, how could you know why you want her to sit still? Miss Sullivan, perhaps you were misled as to Helen's condition. She can neither see nor hear. But if it is her senses that are impaired and not her mind, she must have language. Language is more important to the mind than light is to the eye. But how will you teach her if you can't talk to her? Anyway, I can. We are going to do everything that we can to help you. I don't want you to think of us as strangers, Miss Annie. Strangers aren't so strange to me. I've been around them all my life. Welcome to Ivy Green, Miss Sullivan. I trust you had a good journey. I had several, thank you. Where's Helen? Oh, Miss Annie? We've put you in the upstairs corner room. Now, if there's any breeze at all this summer, you're going to feel it. I'll, I'll take my suitcase. Oh, I have it, Miss Sullivan. No, please, let me. I wouldn't think of it. I have something in it for Helen. I needn't be treated like a guest. Now, when may I see Helen? Well, there she is. That's Helen. She seems very rough, Kate. Why didn't she take her glasses off? Well, the Institute said that the light hurts her eyes. Apparently, she wasn't any blind as a child. Blind? Well, she's had nine operations on her eyes. And they expect one blind person to teach another one? How long was she employed She employed at that school? Oh, she, she wasn't employed there. She was one of their best students. Students? Now you have two blind girls to take care of, Father. You stay out of this. 
James, why do you have to be so mean about Helen? What well, to confirm my father's view of me, of course. Yes, yes. All right then, Helen. Doll will be your first word. It's as good as any. D. O. L. L. Doll. Doll. It has a name. D. O. L. Thank you, Hen. Thanks, Puss. So what was that? Some sort of game? It's an alphabet for the deaf. Each letter has a sign. D, O, L, L. Doll. First, she will learn to imitate. D, O, <sighs> Oh, she can imitate things, all right. Like a regular little monkey. A bright little monkey. Mm -hmm. I think she wants her doll back. She can have it back when she spells it. She has no idea what oh. words even are. How could she spell them? If her fingers learn the letters now, then maybe someday her brain will learn that they have a meaning. Did you make up this alphabet? Me? No. Spanish monks under a vow of silence. Which, Mr. James, I wish you would take. Just one in this house. Where's Miss Annie? She's in her room. Didn't anyone call her to supper? James, go upstairs and bring her down. Certainly. 
I'll get the ladder. What? I'll need a ladder. It won't take long. What are you talking about? Well, Helen locked her in the room and ran off with the key. And I suppose you were going to sit there and say nothing. You told me it was none of my business, Father. I was just trying to respect your wishes. Miss Sullivan, are you in there? Yes, sir, I'm in here. Isn't there a key on your side? No, sir, there's no key, sir. Put that ladder away, Jimmy. Whatever you say, Father. Captain, we can't keep Miss Annie locked up till we find the key. James, bring the ladder back. Whatever you say, Father. I heard her to solve problems, not create them. Put it, Jimmy. Thank you, Buzz. Miss Sullivan! Yes, Captain Kenneth? I hope this is not a sample of what we can expect of you. Come out and sit on my shoulder. I'm perfectly capable of going down a ladder by myself. Do as I say, Miss Sullivan. Chivalrous of you. Oh, this is not chivalry. This is practicality. You're no good to us trapped in a room. <laughs> not in the house ten minutes. Honestly, I don't see how you managed it. I'll look for the key, sir. Thank you. Just don't look in any rooms that can be locked. All right, everyone. Excitement's over. I better leave the L-A-D-D-E-R. that easily. You're wrong. I have nothing better to do and nowhere else to go. To the best of my knowledge, no one in this house has ever tried to control the girl. But how can I discipline her without breaking her spirit? But if she won't obey me, Oh. Oh. Ink. It has a name. Pen. Pen. Oh, bad girl. 
No, never you mind me saying it. But for her. No, Helen. <clears throat> Captain thinks that you're spelling everything that Helen does is like spelling to a fence post. You talk to the baby, don't you? Does she understand what you mean? Not yet, but she will someday if she hears enough words. I'm letting Helen hear the words. How long will it take? A million words, maybe. Hen. Did you see that? I spelled pen. She spelled cake. She wants to see if I can tell the difference. There is nothing impaired in that head, Mrs. Keller. Helen is smart and angry. I can use that. Can you teach me those letters? I'll start tomorrow. If both of us are spelling to her, that makes only about half a million words each. <laughs> oh, help! Why did she get a reward for stabbing me? I, uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm sorry. Solomon, breakfast is ready. Shall I get the ladder? That's enough. Jimmy. Oh, good morning, Miss Annie. Good morning. Uh, morning. I hope you've settled in comfortably, Miss Ellen. Thank you, Captain. I have. Please help yourself. Miss Annie, if there is ever anything that you need, please let us know. Michael Price is up, Father. We should earn a nice profit this year for a change. Used to be a man who make a good living running a farm. Well, perhaps if you leave your pet newspaper and come show me my business, we can make some real money. Not in front of Miss Sullivan. Why not in front of Miss Sullivan? Miss Annie, uh, Helen is used to helping herself from our plates. I'm afraid I'm not used to it. No, of course not. Oh! Viney, please bring Miss Sullivan another plate. There's nothing wrong with my plate, Captain. Only that Helen's hands don't belong in it. Well, one plate is hardly worth spoiling our breakfast over. You see, she's just going to keep trying until she gets away. I must insist that you let the girl go. Thank you. Now she's hurt herself. No, she hasn't. I know a tantrum when I see one. And a badly spoiled child. Miss oh, Sullivan. Please show some pity. For this kind of behavior. It is the one thing she doesn't do. The whole house waits on her hand and foot. Yeah, yeah. You stay out of this. Letting Helen have her own way. It's really such a small thing. Small? It seems you've all decided it's easier to feel sorry for Helen than to... Teach her how to behave. Well, I've not seen that you've taught her anything yet, Miss Sullivan. Quite right, Captain. Well observed. <laughs> I'll start right now if you leave the room. Leave the room? Yes, please, Captain. Right now, if you leave the room. Miss Sullivan, if you're not willing to stand up to one tantrum, I cannot teach her anything. <laughs> Mrs. Captain, you asked if there was anything I needed. Yes, but I... I need to be alone with Helen. Alone with Helen. Right now. Miss Sullivan? Oh, Captain, it... Yes. Captain, may I speak with you outside? Give us a moment, please.
This is absurd. Arthur, I am sure that she is only trying to do what is best. I will not have my house turned into a circus. <laughs> Unless there is a change in attitude, Miss Sullivan is dismissed. Arthur, and, and then what hopes do we have for Helen? No less than we had before. And then perhaps we can regain some quiet. I believe we're on something here. Bob? Hello, Francis. James? Yep. Thought I'd come take a look around. Well, we had an idea last year and tried something. 
And it looks like 22 inches between the plants gives us about twice the yield. Uh, twice the yield. We had that blue mold pretty bad last year, sir. Well, we think it's carrying over the winter and the roots. So we're going to try to get all the roots and stalks out of the ground after the harvest. Well, if the root's gone, if we get a bad rain, we stand to lose a whole layer of topsoil. Well, I was thinking of that, too. Let's plant some low grass for the winter. Look for some, would you, Francis? Mm -hmm. Did you need something, Father? I think I have it, Jimmy. Uh, sorry to interrupt. I've waited for this dance. I only hope we won't be disappointed. Helen doesn't ever disappoint you, Father. Why are you jealous, James? I'm not jealous. I'm envious. It's not only Helen who needs to learn how to talk. Things will be very different here if Helen is better. I know. Who will I blame then for my unhappiness? If only there was someone to help me. I feel I need a teacher as much as Helen does. Miss Sullivan, I've brought Helen a playmate. A kind of graduation present. Please, wait outside, Captain. Miss Sullivan, when two weeks are up. Not until five o'clock. Oh, what difference can half a day make? You don't know how eager we are to have her back. I do know. It's my main concern. Well, you've done wonders, sir. And you've done us a great service. I've actually missed her. I owe that debt to you. Pay it to Helen, Captain. Give her another week. Now, look what you've done for her already. She's well-behaved. She seems quite contented and certainly cleaner. She's cleaner? Is that what you care about? Is that what you care about? She's learning to talk, Captain. The words are in her fingers already. I can't risk her unlearning it when she goes back to her old life in the house. Oh, look. What is she spelling? Water. <laughs> Miss Sullivan? That dog doesn't know what words are any more than she does. The dog's happy enough, though. So God may not have meant for Helen to speak, Miss Sullivan. I mean her too, Captain. Give her half a week. You have until five o'clock. Kate cannot bear to be separated from her for another night. Where? 
Bessie. Your Miss Sullivan insisted on keeping her till five o'clock. No. Not water. Dog. Dog. Water. How do I make her understand? How do I tell you? I don't know anything. Give them back their child and their dog. Both house broken. Everyone's satisfied. Everyone but me and you. Reach! Reach! That's right. Put your things away. Oh. Howie. 
Missy. Please give me more time. I can't. Helen? I want an epidemic on my hands. Yeah. You can't yeah. go! Yeah. Yeah. May I ask, Archie? I'm not very good company right now. Well, I didn't come to keep you company. I came to keep you from getting lost in the dark. Maybe that's just what I was looking to do. Are you feeling sorry for yourself, Miss Sullivan? Just this once. Yes. My father has great respect for you. That's not easily on. He fought at Vicksburg. He edited some newspapers. And he's always daring you to measure up. If you have any advice for me, I wouldn't mind hearing it. I never really had a father, so I'm the last person to ask. But you've got to stand up to the world. That's all I know. Well, what if he's the world? Then you can just look around, James, and see how much bigger it really is. He's a man, James, that's all. So are you. Aunt Evelyn. Well, come in. Come in. It is so good to see you. You have to come and see our Helen now. Sullivan, I've brought you your first month's salary. You've done quite a job. You've taken a wild thing and given us back a child. I taught Helen one thing. No, don't do this, don't do that. I wanted to teach her, yes. Well, you'll have all the time you need now. Will you help me, Captain? Yes, how? Don't undo what I've done. The world is not an easy place for anyone. To give Helen her way in everything is a lie to her. You've got to stand between her and that lie. Don't give in. We're certainly going to try. I used to wonder how I would earn a living. Now the question is, can I survive it? 
I'll see you at supper. Oh, we glad to have you back, Miss <laughs> Jacob was left alone for the breaking of day. He wrestled with an angel. An angel said, let me go for the day breaks. Jacob said, I will not let you go until you bless me. Amen. 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 That's a very strange grace, James. I thought it was a very fitting grace in the circumstances. So you're an expert now on the Bible and tobacco. Is that right, James? Pickles, ain't it? I should say so. You know my opinion of your pickles. Well, this is the last time, I'm afraid. I didn't put up nearly enough last summer, but this year I intend to. Reverend Tompkins stopped by the office today to complain about his weevils. I told him... Did you tell him to... I told him to talk to you about his weevils, James. I think it's marvelous what a successful farmer you have turned out to be, James. Miss Emmy, no. No, please. I have hardly had an hour with her. Captain? Katie, we, uh... We had a little talk. Miss Sullivan feels that if we indulge Helen and me... But what's the child done? He's learned not to throw things on the floor and kick. Oh, it's only a napkin. It's not as if it was something breakable. Either give Helen to me, or you keep her from kicking. Please. What do you want me to do? Let me take her from the table. But this is her first evening back. But so much, Fanny. I have made all of Helen's favorite food. She's testing you. She's testing me? I know. Well, she's not kicking now. This is what I was worried about. Is this what you promised me less than an hour ago? Give in to her, then. She's the one who will pay for it. Please, pass me more of Helen's favorite foods. Take them, Miss Annie. Thank you. There. Take them. No. I won't. I don't see that we need to send her from the table. Let me hold Helen to what she's learned, and she will go on learning. Take her out of my hands, and it all comes apart. She is the guest of honor. Take her out of my hands and it all comes apart. She is the guest of honor. Bring her plate back. If she were seen, child, you would not stand for this. Well, she is not. I think some allowances are called for. Bring her plate back. Thank you. There. Now, let's start all over. Mm -hmm. 
No. 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 Don't get me. What are you doing? I treat Helen like a thing, child, because I ask her to see. I expect her to see. Where are you taking her? To make her refill this picture. Let her speak to you like that, Arthur. No, I don't. Let her go. What? Let her go. She's right. She's right and Kate's right. If you drive Miss Sullivan away from here, then we're lost. No. Helen is lost. Captain, please. Jimmy, thank you. So where we are? You recognize this place? Pump. No. Your mother's not here. I pump.
She wants the key. <laughs> No. 